Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another recommendations video, which I haven't been doing many of those lately. Um, and now is the time, okay? Like I have a few prepared, so there's gonna be um, a couple coming out this week. Um, last week was a little bit crazy and I wasn't feeling super motivated to film. Um, and also I was getting really frustrated with the fading of the light that we were having because a lot of times I have to film after work and I just didn't have the right equipment for this. Well, that changed because I finally splurged and bought a big ring light. Um, I previously had kind of this cheap one that I'd bought when I like first became a creator and it just wasn't cutting it anymore for what I want. Um, and so now I have a big one and I've got the cool halo in the eyes. I always love that. Um, and it also allows me just better lighting in here. So let me know if you like how the glow up is going, but I'm going to probably use these in this in most of my videos now. But anyway, as you can tell by the title, we are doing historical romance wrecks. And this one is just a straight up romance wreck. I think this is like the third or fourth one that I've done. My very first historical romance recommendation, I filmed that over two years ago, I believe. And it was one of the first historical romance wreck videos that was like on booktube. Like there was only a few around. And so that video today even is my most watched video that I have. Um, and I don't like how I look in that, but the, the recommendations are still true. But I've read so many more wonderful historicals that you guys have recommended to me, that my friends have recommended to me. Um, and I'm so excited to share some more with you because lately I've just been on a roll for some wonderful historicals. And so I just wanna pass on these recommendations to you. So some of these books I have already spoken about in multiple videos, but people search for different things when they are on YouTube. So we want to make sure we have that. Also, I wanna um, hawk my merch a little bit. This is one of my cool um, romance reader sweatshirts. So it says proud romance reader and I absolutely love it. Um, you don't see the full thing in the film, so I wanted to show you what it said. Um, merch is down below I have some really fun romance designs um but I love this sweater so much it makes me so happy so let's go ahead and dive into these recommendations um, I'm gonna try not to make this a super droning on um that I do but I am gonna give you the quick setup of each book or tell about the series so that you know what the heck is going on but the first one I want to talk about is actually Broken Wing um my uh ring light is not gonna like this one very much um this is actually on um, Kindle Unlimited. There's a different cover on the Kindle Unlimited one, um, but it is by Judith James. This was a viewer recommendation, and I have to tell you, I was not excited to read it when I pulled it because, again, the other cover is kind of ugly, and I was like, okay. But the beautiful thing about my book rec form, which just so you know, is always in my link tree down below where you can recommend me a book. It's the best place to recommend a book for me because I kind of ignore. Um, when people just put recommendations in the comments, I get way too many to check them all. But if you put in my book rec form, I will find it. And anyway, I will randomly pick a book from that book rec form um, or else when I'm looking for a specific trope or something, I'll find it. And this one was a random pick. And I was like, oh boy, what is this going to be? Right? <sighs> this is one of my favorite historical romances I've ever read. Okay? Okay? I'm going to put it down now because it's very shiny. I'll maybe put up a picture instead. But this book is about a young man, a youngish man, who is a forced prostitute. He's a sex slave in a brothel. And for the last five years, he has been pr protecting this young boy who was kidnapped and has been kept in this brothel for the last five years. And finally, this young man, this young boy who is now like 10 years old, his brother and sister finally find out where he is and they come to pick him up and when they come to get their little brother he doesn't really remember them because it's been so long and the only person who is a brother to him is Gabriel who has been protecting him and offering himself in place of this boy to keep him from being raped so he was able to protect this boy for five years and to keep him from losing his innocence inside this brothel and so this little boy this young boy tells his brother and sister who he doesn't know, like, I'm not coming with you if you don't bring Gabriel with. So they end up 
striking a deal with Gabriel that if he will be this young boy's companion for a certain amount of time to help him get used to his old life, they will pay him for it and he doesn't have to do anything more than just be around and be a friend and he will have a good life now. And Gabriel and Sarah, who is the sister, end up having a romance. Now, this book I would consider um, a historical fiction with a strong romance because at the end of the day, this book is really about Gabriel's journey, but that journey is about his love with Sarah, but there are some other things that are happening in it as well. So beware of the triggers. I feel like I've stated them. He was into forced prostitution, so there's rape that is mentioned. There's also sexual slavery um, and some things that go along with that. Um, but Sarah is a beautiful heroine and the way that she loves Gabriel and helps him is very patient because there are some things that he misinterprets at times and, you know, he assumes things because of the way that he was, had, had to fight for survival and it's a beautiful story. It's beautiful. So absolutely love that one. See, I'm already talking too long. Well, this one will be a little bit easier. So I do have a little series to recommend, which is cool because I know some people are actually reading one of these books for like a book club right now, but it is The Scoundrels of St. James by Lorraine Heath. And those are um, In Bed with the Devil. Ooh. The De Between the Devil and Desire. Surrender to the Devil. And Midnight Pleasures with a Scoundrel. This fourth book um, is actually a six star book for me. And then there's a novella that is The Last Scoundrel, I think. I'll put up a picture, um, which is about the fifth person in this group. So this series is, um, how best to explain this? It's kind of like a reimagining of like uh, Charles Dickens novel and in fact Charles Dickens is like alive and well in this series and there is a man named Fagin who rescued these different orphans and made them his gang of thieves and then they're all grown up now and um, falling in love and all that jazz and these are really gritty they're very sexy um, this one as I said being my favorite has some incredible twists that are in Lorraine Heath style the audiobooks for these are amazing um, each one of them kind of begins with a prologue that is the person like telling how they've gotten where they are now um, so it begins and ends with their like personal diary entry um, and I burned through these books this one was actually a um, either like a book club pick or it, it came out of my TBR tin and then I burned through the rest of these really quickly and Lorraine Heath is someone that I don't know when I will ever have read all of her books but it is my mission to slowly get through them because I very rarely have had a book below four stars from her. Usually they're a five star read. So I highly recommend these. Um, they have all different tropes. They have all different drama in them. But uh, I highly recommend. Then, oh no, where did I put it? It's far over there so we won't, I forgot to grab it. But there is the Midnight in Scotland series by Elisa Braden. Um, actually, I'm going to recommend all of Elisa Braden's books, but I'm going to start with the first ones that I read, which were the, our Midnight in Scotland. This is the current series that she's working on. There's only two books out in it right now. There is The Making of a Highlander and The Taming of a Highlander. Um, the first one is a Scottish lass and an English lord, um, and it is a spinoff from the Rescued from Ruin series, which again, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but this, these ones take place in Scotland, and it's about, um, I think it's going to be about this family that that's a sister and three brothers. And the first one is about the girl. Um, and this Highland Laird is their, not Highland Laird, this English Lord is their neighbor. And there's some land that he has been given. But there are certain things that he has to do before he gets to keep it. Um, and they end up working together to help make him more Scottish and to help make her more ladylike so that she can get married and help out her brother, which I don't want to spoil what's happening with that. But there is some assistance that she needs and she feels like she needs to marry a lord to do that. But she doesn't know that our English lord is an English lord because he's kind of keeping that on the DL. I absolutely loved these books. Then there's the Rescued from Rune series, um, which begins with, which one does it start with? 
shoot, I can't remember. Oh, the the madness of Viscount Asherborn. I don't know. I'll put up a picture of it. Um, this one is a revenge story where our hero was the second son, uh, but his older brother was killed in a duel, and to get revenge against the man who killed him, he makes his younger sister fall in love with him and like trick her into marrying him. And then he's like, and then I'm never going to let him see his sister again. <laughs> Very extreme uh, version of revenge, but also like, it's very interesting. So that's the first one in the series. But there is nine books total, plus a prequel and a novella. Um, and I loved all of them. I binged these books between August and September, and it was an amazing time. I, I loved these so much. Again, there's pretty much every trope you can think of. My favorite books in the series were number four, which is um, the, uh, the Devil is a Marquess. And I think number seven, which is um, Confessions of a Dangerous Lord. So those are my favorites. But that series strongly focuses around the Huxley family, which again, the spinoff books, which I just talked about, John Huxley is the hero of the first one. And Jane Huxley is the heroine in the second one. So I really love these books. The audiobooks are amazing if you can get your hands on them, which you can because they're all on any play. Then I recently made a TikTok about these and they've kind of been getting a hit and that is the Markham Hall trilogy by Sierra Simone. There's a plane going over, which begins with the awakening of Ivy Leavold, the education of Ivy Leavold and the punishment of Ivy Leavold. And now these are all really short. They're about novella length. They basically make one book. I think you can get the bind up of them um, on Kindle. I'm not sure, but these actually were recently recovered and I had to have the physical copies once they were recovered because they're absolutely beautiful. These are by Sierra Simone. This is a dark Jane Eyre retelling that includes, um, uh, BDSM in it. So Mr. Rochester is a dom because of course he is. Our heroine Ivy um, goes to Markham Hall to, I believe, find out more about what happened to her, is it her sister? Um, let me double check. Oh, it's her cousin's widower. Okay, so her cousin was married to him and she died. Um, and he is going to, she's going there to find out more about what's going on. So I love these so much. Um, and I'm really happy that my TikTok had more people checking them out because they're, if you love a bit sexier and by bit, I mean like five chili pepper, sexy historicals, like this is the way to go for you. I love these. Then I have a bit of a more gut-wrenching one to recommend to you, and that is Annie's Song by Katherine Anderson. And it's gut-wrenching and also freaking beautiful. This was another viewer recommendation, and the viewers, you guys, you know your shit, okay? This one is a Western historical, and it is about our heroine, Annie, who is considered to be crazy. She's considered to be daft or touched in the head or whatever we want to call it in this, because when she was six, she was sick and she went deaf and her parents never bothered to find out if that's actually what happened or not because isn't that just how it goes and she is 20 years old and she gets raped by this man named Douglas they say there, there isn't graphic on page rape just so you know but it is a trigger warning because we definitely know that it's happening um she ends up becoming with child from this rape and Douglas's older brother when he finds out his name is Alex and when he finds out what his brother did he kicks him out of the house, disowns him, and he offers to marry Annie, even though, again, everyone thinks that she is insane. And he agrees to marry her, and he wants the child because he believes himself to be sterile from uh, illness as a child or as a young man. And he just wants to take care of her and take care of his niece or nephew and love them. Um, and the more time he spends with Annie and the more he learns about her, he realizes that there's no way this woman is as 
crazy as they make her sound and it becomes clear that she's deaf. And so Alex goes about teaching her everything that he can um, and opening her world to her by helping her learn sign language, by um, just giving her everything she could ever want. And I freaking love this book. I love it so much. Then I want to talk about an author basically because I have quite a few books to talk about. So I'm going to do this in an interesting way. The first one I want to talk about is actually Dangerous by Minerva Spencer. This is the first book in the Outcast series. So I actually purchased this book and this book quite a few years ago, like maybe three, because I thought they had beautiful covers. Okay. Then this book came out by Minerva Spencer called Notorious. And it's from the Rebels of the Ton series. And it said first in a new series, which it is. And I quickly realized that Gabriel Marlington, who is the hero of this, is actually the younger son of our heroine here, who is Euphemia Marlington. Okay. Um, so I actually read this. I actually read all three books in this series first, um, even though I owned these ones and I just never got around to them. Um, but now we're going to talk about them for a minute here, but we're going to start with talking about dangerous. Okay. Dangerous is about, um, Mia Marlington, who was forcibly a part of a harem in Oman, um, for the sheik who lived there. Um, is it a sheik? Is that what we call it? It might not be a sheik. I might have said that wrongly. Um, he's a sultan, a sultan Baba Hassan was his name. And she has a, she was taken captive at the age of 14 and forced to become a concubine, um, for this sultan, um, at the age of 14. And she has a 17 year old son. She's now 32. And when her husband died and one of his other sons took over, she had to flee for her life. And now her son, who is 17, and his older brother, the one who's seizing control, are kind of trying to fight it out to become the next sultan. And she is rescued and taken back to, and when she flees, she is rescued and taken back to England. And she quickly realizes that she wants nothing to do with English society because they are cruel to her and they're judging her for things they don't know. She is freer with her words and her body. She is a bit manipulative. She's had to be those things to survive in this harem that had 60 plus women, a hundred children. And she was like in a fight for her life pretty much every day. And now she decides that because her father is going to like force her to marry someone. He doesn't want to deal with her. Um, He's not that happy to have her back because she's kind of just this oddity who is not making things like good for him to have this oddity in his life. And so he's going to marry her off. So he throws a big party to find her a husband. And then we meet Adam to Courtney who has had two wives die and he's called the murdering Marquis and he needs an heir because he's had two wives die. He has three daughters. He doesn't have an heir. And when him and Mia meet, they both can tell the other one is not someone to mess with. Um, and what Mia wants to do is she wants to marry him, get him to leave her alone on their estate, and then run away to get her son. Um, but she's not prepared for the strong feelings of lust and love that she has for Adam. I just finished this book last night. Um, I'm actually reading Barbarous right now, which is about the man who rescued Mia. He's, um, he's a, uh, like he was a privateer and stuff like that. He rescued her and I loved this. Like she's keeping it a secret that her son is still alive. Um, but I didn't mind. Like I, I loved it. I, oh, I love this book so much. I gave it five stars. Okay. Um, this one, obviously I don't have a rating for yet. I'm halfway through it. I'm loving it, but I wanted to show you these two because I do feel like this is where you should start 
because of what I'm going to tell you about these three books right here, which again, I didn't realize these books were connected to these until I started reading them, but these really good. Then we have Notorious, who is about Gabriel Marlington, who is Mia's son. Okay. His, uh, Arabic name is actually Gibral, which is Gabriel in like how we would say it. And now it's been, I think it's been, let me actually check. And I know what year it is. Okay. So it's been six years. So he's like 23 years old. And our heroine is Drusilla Claire, who is best friends with, um, Gabriel's younger stepsisters, um, who he has three of them now, right? when his mom is married to Adam to Courtney. And this one is a best friend's brother book. And our heroine, she is a bit ahead of her time. Um, she is a feminist and an activist. However, she's an activist in a way that is like pretty practical in my mind. Like there are things she wants to see done, rights she wants women to have, but the way she's going about it, is a way that I like to read about. Okay. Now there are some miscommunications between this one and it can be really frustrating. But the thing that's beautiful is that they both are very, this is a mutual pining story. So yeah, this is about Gabriel who is Mia's son from that book. Then we have outrageous. And this one is about Eva to Courtney, who is Adam's daughter. Okay. So this is, this is the best friend from this one. Okay. And now at the end of this book, there was this dude named Godric who was trying to ruin their happily ever after. And so Eva kidnaps him to keep him from ruining their happily ever after before they leave for their honeymoon. And Godric immediately is like, you stupid woman. <laughs> now we have to get married because you've kidnapped me and now you're ruined. And she's like, no, no, I don't have to marry you. And he's like, yes, you do. Um, so this is a forced proximity. It's a kind of a road trip. Um, the power dynamics go back and forth because she's the one who kidnapped him, but then he's the one who's in control, but then she's the one back and it goes back and forth. This is also an age gap enemies to lovers. And wow, this one was, this was crazy. And then infamous, which just recently came out. Um, this is about, um, Richard, what's his last name? His, his name is Richard and he has a twin brother and they're actually twin sons of this heroine in the one that I'm reading right now, which was really cool because infamous Celia is a mean girl. And 10 years ago when she was new to the ton she played a prank on Richard's brother, Lucian, and um, this woman who is like a wallflower. And it forced those two to have to get married because of what she did. And then some bad, I don't want to ruin it, but she had a fall from grace. And now she is a lady's companion. She is living you know, on the graces of this woman that she is a companion for, and she is protecting a pretty big secret. And she gets invited to a house party, or well, she doesn't, her, the woman she's a companion for gets invited to a house party that is being held at the estate of Lucian and the woman who, um, who she kind of made it so they had to get married. Um, and so Richard, who's the twin brother of Lucian, he was seen as kind of a nerdy guy, like kind of a, like not the hot brother, I guess you'd say when they were young, but now he's kind of this like sexy academic and he kind of gets a, he's not a full on rake, but he's very interested in like female pleasure and like taking care of his partner, that kind of thing. And he is one of the few people who doesn't outright hate on Celia because he can tell that she has more beneath the surface than what he thought. Um, this book to me was so beautiful. Um, 
to find out what was going on in this mean girl's life that made her act the way she did, that made her lash out, that made her hurt people. And while there's never a reason to be a bully, the things that were happening in her life, you really feel for her as it gets revealed and you find out what was going on and then what she's been through the last 10 years um, and how the people whose lives she ruined by forcing them to get married, that they're actually pretty blessed by this cruel thing that she supposedly did. So, okay, that was a lot of raving, but I highly recommend all of these books by Minerva Spencer. Now, Minerva Spencer is actually a pseudonym for um, S.M. La Violette, um, which is funny because I thought that that was the pseudonym, but these books are actually like Chantelle La Violette is the actual author name. Um, it's inside, so I'm not outing anybody, but she actually writes also historical erotica, which I have read and really loved. Um, but we're not talking about that in this one. But anyway, I highly recommend Minerva Spencer's books. I know there is some like not wanting to read historicals that have illustrated covers or stuff like this, but I, I highly recommend these ones. They're actually ones I stand by and I really, really love. Whereas like the Evie Dunmar ones, I'm not as big a fan of, but these are still really sexy, um, really gripping stories and I really love them. Then I have The High Woman's Folly by Daria Vernon. I talked about this one quite a, quite a lot a few months ago. Um, I did this as a buddy read with a friend. Um, this one is about Beth Clark, who um, is kidnapped twice in one night. She gets kidnapped by her, I think it's her aunt. Her aunt has died and left her some money. Um, and so her aunt's steward kidnaps her and is going to force her to marry him so he can have her money. And then they get attacked by highwaymen. And so Reese Booker is one of those highwaymen and he kidnaps her. And they end up spending a night at the highwayman's folly um, before she gets let go um, after like the ransom gets paid. And then we go ahead a few years, which you know I'm not always a huge fan of, but the way that it plays out in this one, um, because they have this amazing connection, like they have a deep connection between the two of them. But our hero knows that as a highwayman, he's not worthy of this woman and he goes about finding a way to become worthy of her, which I love. Um, there's also going to be more coming in this series. Um, Daria Vernon is actually like an Instagrammer. And so the next book in this series, which I think this series is called um, The Rewards of Ruin, will be coming out soon. So I highly recommend this. And then the last one I want to recommend, I just read recently. And if you go back to um, my most recent uh, weekly wrap up, you will learn a lot more about it. But that is Eyes of Silver, Eyes of Gold by Ellen O'Connell. Um, this this book is about a girl named Annie. Again, Anne is her name. And our hero's name is Cord. And he is half Native American. His father had kids with his first wife and she died. And then he married this Native woman for love. He absolutely loved her and had two kids with her. And those children are pretty mistreated by the town that they're in. And, you know, it's no surprise. People are racist. It's a thing. Um, but Anne and Cord have kind of known each other since they were kids. And they actually have had kind of like a little flame for each other. But nothing ever came of it because of reasons. Well, our heroine now, she's 28. And her father has been trying to force her to marry different people for years. And she has always put him off. Well, this time it's the last straw and she's taken all the money she has in her possession, which is only $20 and she makes a run for it. And her first night, she actually sleeps in Cord's barn. And when he goes out to feed his horses, he's actually a horse trainer and that's what he does for work. He discovers her and he's like, come inside. Let me make you some breakfast. And she tells him what her plans are. And he's like, you're going to need more money than $20. I'm going to loan you some more money. And she's like, no, no, I'd never be able to pay it back. And he's like, either you let me give you money or I'm going to take you home. Like, what do you want? 
And as they're discussing this, her father and a preacher and a bunch of men show up and they are going to force her to marry the man that he wants her to marry. But instead, they force her into this mock marriage with Cord and then they beat the shit out of him and her and they leave him for dead. And her dad is like, when you come to your senses, you can come home and beg for forgiveness for what you've done. Well, Anne doesn't do that. She realizes Cord isn't dead and she's able to get him into the house and she starts taking care of him and she fights off anyone who comes in to tell her differently or tells her to give up on him, including his own family. And they fall in love. I don't know how else to say it. I don't want to say anything else. This is a very slow moving it doesn't feel slow at the beginning, but this is a slow building, slow moving relationship. It's a lot about like living on the farm, training horses, becoming a couple, becoming a family, but it is heart wrenching and beautiful. And I love it with all my heart. And I hope that you will give it a try and love it as much as I do too. So there you go. There is some historical romance recommendations from me to you. Um, it's been a while, like I said, since I've done just a straight up, here's some historical. So I hope you like it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. I have an entire playlist of over a hundred videos of different tropes and um, subgenres of romance that you can check out. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.